Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Uh, we're not doing a top five today it's because of the holiday and I just wanted to get a quick video out um, just uh, looking at a brief tour of my current Debian build on my media PC and I'm probably gonna wipe this out soon uh, so I can start doing testing for my mid-year uh, Linux uh, updates so which Linux distros to be looking at uh, so leave your comments down below as to which distros I should be looking at currently I want to give elementary another run on uh, this hardware and disk I want to run I want to try out Solace Fedora OpenSUSE I'm basically going to be looking at a lot of a variety of different distros over the next few weeks on actual hardware um, so let me know which distros I should look at in the comments down below and I'll start compiling those and building uh, building my list of top five for the mid-year of 2018. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to walk you through Debian and uh, why might you use Debian. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Debian itself is one of the grandfathers of Linux, one of the older uh, versions. And uh, they don't release updates just because there's an update to be released. Uh, they release updates when there is, uh, you know, a reason to release it. They always have the older branch, they always have the current stable branch, and they always have a testing branch. Now, when you're in the current stable branch, which is what this is, this is uh, Debian 9, which is codenamed Stretch, uh, when it's first released, of course, it's going to have, you know, most of the, the latest up-to-date software. Uh, this was released, uh, I don't know, six, eight months ago or so. I forget exactly what. And uh, so you'll see they're still running LibreOffice 5. I could force 6 on here if I wanted to, but um, I don't necessarily need that. Um, but what you'll notice as we go in here, it's 5.2, so it's not the oldest version of 5 there is. Uh, everything works out of the box. I don't use LibreOffice on this a lot, so I didn't have not made any adjustments, but everything just looks very nice. Some of that's the theming I have. Um, one of the other things that I like about it is when you actually go and have a look at their web page, and uh, you go on and have a look at it, is you can download, it's not Debian.com, it's Debian, what is it? Debian dot something, Debian.org. Uh, when you go and download it, there's a variety of different downloads, and the one I usually get is I just use the net installer. Uh, the reason is is it's a lot smaller of a download, but it does require a uh, an internet connection to download. You can also download um, you can download your live disks and things. One of the things I really like about Debian is as you are installing it, you can pick your desktop environment and you can put multiple desktop environments on it. Um, it doesn't have every single desktop environment, but it does have all of your major ones. You know, you have XFCE, um, I believe you have GNOME, you have Cinnamon, you have KDE, uh, you have Mate, so a whole variety of different desktops. Now, this build here, um, I built this for a specific purpose, so I went with Cinnamon uh, just because, and I themed it out very nicely um, to show you what my themes are, if you like this, this look in this build. Um, I just went online and I downloaded your themes. Uh, so I'm using, I guess I'm using this Tire Himen theme, I guess. You can just download that and then I'm using uh, Green Linguana for most of the things. So I really like the way this looks. Uh, it's, uh, it has some transparency, it has a little bit of skeuomorphism, but not an overly amount. Uh, so it's a very nice system. Uh, but you download the installer and then that allows you to pick which desktop operating system or which desktop environment, excuse me, that you want. And uh, you can go with pretty much anything. And the great thing about Debian is how stable everything works. You have very few issues. In fact, the only issues I've ever really run into are related to volume issues, particularly volume issues with Kodi. And I actually seem to have resolved that. So if you actually go in to load up Kodi, uh, what you would find is that as soon as you would load up Kodi, you'd find that your volume would max out. And uh, when when you do that uh, and your volume had maxed out, uh, so if I just push on my volume tab, you can see it's no longer maxing. The reason is, is that Debian does something a little bit different than some distros do uh, right out of the gate, and that is that it uses flat volumes. Um, <clears throat> and so to solve that, what you want to do is you just want to edit um, 
you want to edit this file here. Uh, it's an Etsy Pulse Daemon dot config. Of course, you're going to want to enter your password. Um, and uh, what you'll see here as we load this guy up is down here you'll see flat volumes what happens is this line well first it says yes but it's also commented out with the semicolon like this so the default file looks like this that is what causes some systems to screw with your volume so if you want to restore it back to normal just change that to no press uh press this um, and then um, save that file and then what you're actually going to have to do is you're going to have to um, reset the uh, the computer like reboot the computer so that's the fix to that now the other thing that Debian does more for a um, more for a security thing is that your basic user is not in in the pseudo users group you'll see that I am running I do have I have added my current my basic user to the pseudo group that's fairly easy to do you just need to go in there and um, uh, you need to log out of the system log in as root and then uh, as a root user add your current user to the pseudo group that's all you need to do uh, log out of root log back into yours and you're set to go so that's one of the things that I did for simplicity of of using the system that I want to be able to install software on the fly so I always add myself into the uh, into the root users group into the pseudo group fixing the flat volumes that pretty much solves any issue that I have ever encountered on Debian um, I'm sure that there's probably a few other other little odds and ends some people will find. But as far as this is my main media system, so I'm using it to watch videos. I'm using it to check accounts. I'm actually using this one also for all email type stuff right now. Uh, I'm not going to boot that up because that contains private emails. Um, the uh, I use, of course, Evolution for my uh, business emails. I use Thunderbird for anything that I want to access with an IMAP system. Uh, as far as the software availability, uh, they don't have a GUI-based software uh, installer. They do have Synaptic Package Manager on here. So Synaptic is, if you're not a brand new person, you probably like Synaptic um, better than most other things. Um, but you can actually, you know, you can search for packages. You can see there's a variety of different options over here. So if I click email... You know, you'll see all the packages. This is a little overwhelming for a new user. A lot of these things are just kind of background files that just sort of need to be installed uh, to do certain functions. So I'm not a huge fan of Synaptic for a new user, and Debian doesn't have a good graphical installer. There's probably some you can install if you know of any. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below to help uh, to help new users because... Uh, that is something that that is is lacking. Um, I pretty much know which packages I want to install, and I usually just install them through the terminal anyway. Um, but uh, you do have a wide variety of packages. Of course, you have the the .deb file incorporation. So things like Skype that I use on this computer sometimes. Um, although the Microsoft has broken the recent versions of Skype, um, I do actually have Skype, and uh, I can use Skype. And all you need to do is just head right to their website and uh, download the DEB file. Let's show you where that is. So if you come over here to Skype, um, you want to download the DEB. Of course, you can get the Snap as well. Um, I'm not sure Debian supports Snap at this point. I, I don't know. You can probably add it pretty easily. Um, but if you just go ahead and download your uh, DEB file, that's going to download this file. Double click that. That should run just fine. That'll install it. Like I said, Skype, Microsoft has broken Skype. Uh, like it'll work, but after about 10 minutes on a call, it gives you this poor connection thing. The only fix I know of is to go and find an older version. Um, I just generally reset the call because I'm not uh, um, not too much uh, caring about that function. As far as uh, applications, um, there's a lot of different applications. I've never looked at Time Tracker. Huh, cool, look at that. I can start tracking time. That's neat. 
Uh, they have a variety of different uh, system tools. Again, some of these tools are going to be de dependent on what desktop environment you have installed. Since I've in installed Cinnamon, there's a variety of different applications here. Um, there were a lot more games installed. I removed most of them. I must have just forgotten four in a row. I pretty much removed a lot of games and stuff. Um, I don't recall installing Inkscape, so that must have come with it. Um, I installed, I think Firefox ESR comes with it. I've, I've been using that, don't have any issues with that. Um, I installed Chromium, I installed Skype. Uh, I think Thunderbird comes pre-installed. I installed Evolution. Um, I think I may have installed Brasario. I installed Kodi, Simple Screen Recorder. I think that was about it. So pretty much everything else in the menu is what came pre-installed in the system. Of course, with Rhythmbox, I use that for podcast testing, things like that. I threw all my main applications down here. I was thinking about running, you know, another panel or something, but that kind of became more annoying. So I just went with the simple quick launch bar. Just keep my desktop very clean and very, uh, very nice. So I like the setup. This is my favorite type of desktop setup. Like I said, I built this. Uh, this is not how I usually run my media PCs. Uh, I was building this specifically for a different application. Um, uh, but I wanted to show you guys what the what this build looks like. Very nice build. I've, I very much like Debian. It is one of my favorite uh, distros. Uh, so I highly recommend Debian, although it's not for the newest user. Uh, it does not have the greatest functionality for the newest user out of the box. Um, but uh, just because it doesn't have graphical uh, package installers, uh, easy search functions, um, and you do have to t fiddle around a little bit with the volume settings and with uh, adding your user to the pseudo group or remembering to log out of your user and logging in as root to install things, which, by the way, is a good function. It is, it is a good security-minded thing. Uh, for me, as the type of user I am, I just prefer to have myself in the pseudo group. Uh, but regardless, uh, that is Debian. You can uh, check out their website, Debian.org. Uh, you can download it. You can get the uh, you can download just the net installer, which is usually what I get because I don't need to test it. Uh, the uh, this image over here, which you can either get uh, 64 bit PC bit torrents uh, or a live key. You can grab those and you know download the live keys. I forget which desktop environment they give you on the live system. I don't remember off the top. Um, uh, buy a computer. Okay, so actually, oh, this is nice. So here's a list of vendors you can contact if you want to buy a computer uh, with it pre-built. Let's see what's in the United States. A few different options there, but I guess these are our individual companies that you could contact for uh, getting a computer pre-built with Debian installed on it. So that's a cool function. And if you want to purchase, um, you can purchase a copy of the CDs uh, with Debian on it. So that is also another option. So they do make it, uh, they do make it very nice uh, to use and uh, very nice to install. The system works really well. Uh, you can also, like I said, if you do need some of the more latest packages, test out the testing branch, which I find is generally still pretty stable as well. It's just a testing branch, so it's kind of almost like a, a rolling release type like you might find in OpenSUSE or in an Arch base. Uh, it has a lot more newer structures and new, newer systems. Uh, I use the stable, which means that right now being only nine months old does have some of the more recent packages, but it may be a few years before they release another stable branch. And so we may not see LibreOffice 6 in, uh, in Stretch anytime soon. Uh, so if it, that's the one of those things that you need to ask yourself. If you need the absolute latest and greatest of all the packages, you very well may want to either run with the with the um, the testing branch or run with something else like an Arch or something that updates itself, you know, every every few months or every year or so. Uh, but if you need a system that is going to be rock stable and isn't going to break on updates and stuff like that, then uh, Debian is definitely a place to go. I always keep a separate distro around of Debian that has three different desktop environments on it. 
Uh, that still is my only Linux system with a perfectly working Skype <laughs> because of the way it runs. And it's, it's, it's rock solid. It is absolutely awesome. So uh, Debian is uh, highly recommended. It's just not for the brand new user out there. And like I said earlier, if you have issues with your volume stuff, try that fix I found. It took me about six months to find that fix. Not that I was looking for it every day. I just kind of stumbled upon it. It seemed to solve that only major issue I was, I've been having. So uh, that's my Debian build. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know your thoughts. And also let me know the distros you'd like me to have a look at for considering for my top five Linux picks for uh, the mid-year review of 2018. So thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.